Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dinan Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today, we continue our discussion on biology of tooth movement. If you remember from the last session, we explained that for many years, the compression tension theory was a dominant theory to explain how tooth movement occurs in response to application of orthodontics forces. However, as we discussed in previous session, there was many scientific observation that uh, compression tension theory could not explain. And the most important part was why the implant or ankylosed tooth cannot move in response to orthodontics forces when the bone receiving both compression and tension as usual. In face of all these deficiencies, there was a need for new theory. Scientists at Citor Academy developed a theory that is called biphasic theory. Based on this theory, PDL is the main target of orthodontics forces. And in absence of the PDL similar to the implant or ankylosed teeth, there will not be uh, any orthodontics tooth movement. Today, I'm focusing on early events of this theory. Based on this theory, in response to application of orthodontics forces, inflammatory markers appear in the PDL because orthodontics forces cause very light trauma in the PDL. Doesn't matter it is compression or tension, both can cause trauma on the PDL. These inflammatory markers that are called cytokines are wide spectrum of different molecules. Some of them are chemokines that recruit other cells inside the area such as monocyte or osteoclast precursor cells. Also, some of these molecules will try to act as anti-inflammatory molecules to control the inflammation so it does not get out of hand. The most important part is the osteoclast precursor cells or monocyte. These cells have a receptor at their surface that is called rank. Local cells such as osteoblast have a protein at their surface called rank ligand. Because of interaction of this ligand at the surface of the local cells and rank receptors at the surface of the osteoclast precursor cells, the cells start to interact with each other and they fabricate the osteoclast. The osteoclasts are the bone resorbing cells that try to, by resorbing the bone, resolve the trauma that is caused by the orthodontics forces. Please pay attention. As I said, inflammatory markers appear on both compression and tension side. Therefore, osteoclasts appear both on the compression and tension side. And this appearance of the osteoclast in the area causes osteopenia in the area, means that the bone density decreases, bone start to resorb. And this resorption is important for the tooth movement. But what scientific observation can support this theory? Based on this theory, if you are using anti-inflammatory medication, one would expect the rate of tooth movement decrease significantly. Let's do experiments together. Assume we are applying orthodontics forces on the tooth of our experimental animals. You're expecting the tooth moves, and it does. What happens if you're combining these orthodontics forces with anti-inflammatory medication? Yes, the tooth movement stops. Also, the researchers that were able to knock out some of the genes in the animals, in other words, the animal could not experience those inflammatory markers that were important in the early events of orthodontic tooth movement, they noticed that the tooth movement decreased significantly. All these observations confirm that inflammatory markers and the PDL play a significant role in response of the tooth to orthodontics forces. The clinical tip that we get from this observation is that when our patients express some discomfort in response to uh, application of orthodontics forces, that usually this discomfort is high in first and second day, maybe a prescription of anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen is not a great idea. I hope you enjoyed this session of Citor channel. Uh, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button.